Okay. Well, <laughs> let's try it again. Well, these are just some reference on on the works that uh, we have published over, as I say, over the last two years when we started to to work on this topic. Basically, this is motivated by the the observations published by the Even Horizon Telescope collaboration in in, in twenty nineteen when well suppose the 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 beginning probably of a new era where uh, the observations or better say the reconstruction of the picture of ultra compact objects may be useful to 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 test in gravitational physics in the in the in the future uh, by now, what we have is that the even horizon telescope, uh, this one is, I think, is the, the one from uh, N87, is just the, a reconstruction uh, coming from, uh, from data uh, from several telescopes uh, located around the world. And what you, you see there is just a superposition of, uh, of, of rings around the central combat object that we believe uh, and with the data that we have uh, that is a black hole and the point is that uh, in the future maybe we will be able maybe not uh, at this point we cannot answer that question but we hope to be able to disentangle the different physical effects that uh, that uh, form these super or superimposed light rings all around the, the central combat object the point is that uh, these light rings, and particularly one that we call photon ring, is due to only because of geometrical effects. Basically, it's going to depend on what space-time geometry you have or what space-time geometry is induced around, around the central object by this central object. So the point that we we try to answer and we we were dealing with over the last two years is well, we all know perfectly now and 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 over the last years uh, a lot of groups and very high uh, level groups have been working on on this, uh, and we know perfectly how uh, the picture is gonna be if we have a black hole a black hole within the the care family of solutions of general relativity. Our point was, okay, what happens if instead of uh, the care family of solutions of general relativity, we have other solutions beyond it? And how the picture is gonna look like and whether we can infer difference with respect to the care family of solutions of general relativity. So, my talk is going to be basically about the simulation that we have performed, uh, taking into account just the mainly the effects due to the, the, the gravitational geometry that is behind the, the central object that you are trying to simulate. To do so, well, we I'm going to start to review well some basics that probably you all know uh, how we can we can study uh, well the photon trajectories that uh, reach our our screen our telescope and how we can reconstruct the point where this photo was generated nearby the central object the ultra compact object uh, how this is basically uh, the the product of the deflection that uh, the central object is, is, is inducing on this photon that was generated nearby. Then I will explain how we uh, trace all the trajectories that, uh, uh, from photons that reach our screen, uh, how we trace all of them. And we just focus on the spherically symmetric space times. Uh, this is because, well, it's, it's, it's the simplest case and, and, and you can do it very, very easily. And then, uh, well, we will assume some particularly intensity profiles of the, of the accretion disk in order to reconstruct 
how the, the shadows form around some objects that are not black hole or are not black hole from general relativity, but what we have called black hole name makers. So objects that are very similar to mm, Schwarzschild or Kerr black holes, but are not the same. And, and, and any difference that you may infer in the picture that, that you obtain may lead you to the conclusion that uh, what you have there is not a uh, general relativity object. So you have a, 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 some deviations or, or some other theory that goes beyond it. And then I will finish with the conclusions. So how we study trajectories of light? Well, as you, you probably have all studied in your general relativity courses, what you have is uh, in, a, in a particular space-time uh, that is described by, by a metric, and new geodesics are just given by the, the geodesic equation and the constraint equation that is telling you basically that the, the proper time of massless particles is, is null. So in order to, to simplify our calculations and, and just to, as I say, to compare the simplest object in general relativity with other simplest object, objects in theories beyond, we are assuming an spherically symmetric metric. So uh, writing in these coordinates that basically are the coordinates for a, a far away observer, what we are going to have is an spherically symmetric metric and a metric that is going to be asymptotically flat. Similarly, as Schwarzschild metric is in general relativity. So in order to describe how the trajectories of the photons are going to be, is very useful in, in general relativity or, or even in Newtonian gravitational physics to compute the symmetries of that particular space-time. A symmetry in, in, in a particular space-time metric is given just by the invariance of the metric under a, a particular coordinate transformation. So that if you transform the metric and this remains invariant under this coordinate transformation, what you have is, a, is what is known as a killing vector that is a, is a symmetry of the trajectories that are going to be described in that space time. Uh, then the point is that uh, as, as in every physical system, when you have a symmetry, you have a conserved quantity. So as in, in Newtonian gravity, you have that the, the, in the central force problem, you have that the energy or the angular momentum is are conserved. Here, you are going to have similar symmetries that are going to lead to, to the conservation of some physical magnitudes that are going to be important in order to describe the trajectories of the, of the photon. Some of the, of the most common uh, symmetries on, on, on space-time metrics are uh, those space-time metrics that uh, have a time-like killing vector that basically means that the metric is, is invariant under time translations, or better say that the energy of a, parti of a particle, of a test particle moving in that space-time is going to be conserved. Homogeneous and isotropic, that we all know from cosmology, basically it means that the, the metric is invariant the rotations and spatial translations. And the maximum number of symmetry that we may have in a space-time metric in four dimensions are going to be 10. So in our case, what we have is a spherically symmetric uh, space-time so that we are going to have uh, three killing vectors, one, well, four, I better say, one uh, associated to the time translation and the other three associated to the, to the, to the rotational, to the spatial uh, rotation. That we may uh, reduce just to an axial symmetry because you have an spherically symmetric metric. Basically, it, it doesn't matter where in which plane the, the trajectories are taking 
I, uh, are taking place because the the, the spherical the, the spherical symmetry uh, is telling you that it doesn't matter what what plane are you choosing for your trajectories. So with these two killing vectors, with these two symmetries, basically what you are going to have is that the energy of a test particle, it doesn't matter if it's massive or massless, are going to have two magnitudes that are conserved. One is the energy and the other one is the angular moment. This is nothing surprise, actually in Newtonian gravity is what happens. And we are going to define a parameter that is going to be very important, that is called the... the impact parameter that is going to measure how close uh, a test particle that you, you trace back from your screen to the place where it was originated is bas basically is going to tell you how close to the central object mm -hmm. was passing through this, this particle. And it's basically defined as the, as the, the quotient be between angular momentum and and, and energy. So then the trajectory, and we can assume to be in the equatorial plane because the, the spherical symmetry is going to be given basically by the constraint equation where we, we can obtain the, the, the equation, the, the, the dynamical equation for the radial coordinate. And this is going to be reduced at the end of the day to a problem of one, one dimension, uh, where you are going to have an effective potential that is given here. And this potential basically is going to depend on the uh, impact parameter that as is a conserved quantity. You can compute it just to take in uh, the, the, the just evaluating the, the function that is describing, are describing your, met, your metric at the minimum point where the, where the particle passed through the, the central object. At the end of the day, if you, if you <laughs> derive this equation again, with respect to the affine parameter that is, is parametrizing your trajectory, you obtain this dynamical equation that is the same that you obtain from geodesic equation. And the, the circular orbits that are gonna, uh, that may contain this space time for photons or for mass or generally, generically for massless particles are gonna be given just by the zeros of this, of this function. Or what is the same, are gonna be given by the maximums and minimums of the, of the effective potential. So then what we are going to try to compute is, well, we have a particular photon that is, has reached our screen, and we try to, um, to compute that where this photon was originated. So how close was passing through the, compa the central compact object, given a particular uh, a particular impact parameter. And we are going to define a particular impact parameter that we call critical, that is the one that coincides exactly with the, the, the circular orbit, or better say, the photon sphere. Because at the end of the day, as we have an spherical symmetry, symmetric space time, what we are going to have is not a, well, we will see later that we will see just a light ring, but because uh, we we see just just a plane from from our perspective. But what we have around the central compact object is a photon sphere, so uh, uh, a particular radi radius that is defining you a maximum of the of the potential, and in that maximum, you, what you have are circular orbits for massless particles that are unstable. So what we are interested in then is, well, we, uh, we detect some photons coming from this, from this object and that uh, were passing nearby. And 
we are interested to compute how deflected are because of the of the central object. So this is something very well known in general relativity uh, that you can compute how the the trajectory has been deflected when the photon has passed through the the compact object and how which is the angle that has been deflected and how this is gonna affect the picture that you reconstruct in your in your laboratory with the with the with all the photons that you have detected coming from from this object. So the next point is to basically what is called ray tracing. Let's consider, uh, as I say, a uh, particular metric, uh, uh, a general spherical symmetry metric that is going to go beyond. We, we will then uh, consider several cases that uh, are near, well, are close to the Schwarzschild case, but they differ on, on a particular parameter. This parameter we, we, we call A. We will see later what this means. Depending on this parameter, actually, what we are going to have is a, is a black hole that can be Schwarzschild black hole if this parameter is equal to zero. We may have a transversal Warhol if this parameter has, uh, uh, has a, uh, a, a value that avoids the formation of uh, even horizons. So the trajectory that we have, we may write now in this radial coordinate called x that is, is related to the radius of, of two spheres of the described by the metric. And then we can compute how the, uh, which is the, the, the critical impact parameter that corresponds to those photons exactly uh, uh, that if we throw a photon from our, from our location, with this impact parameter, we'll reach exactly the, the, the photon sphere when reach the, the, the compact object. So uh, in, in this case, and as we define the, the effective potential, this impact uh, parameter is gonna be given just basically by the by the maximum of this of this potential where the potential is gonna is gonna uh, is gonna be given by by one over the, the square of the of the critical parameter. So basically what we are gonna compute is how deflected the photons that we we detect in our screen were when passing through the compact object, yes, in terms of the impact parameter that, that may have. So in order to classify the, the, the deflections of, of the photons around the compact object, we define this number that is called the, mm -hmm. the, the number of half orbits around the central object that basically is telling you how half orbits the photon has gone around the compact object before reaching infinity or before reaching our, our detectors. So, we classify this in three types of emission. The direct emission that basically the, the photon that we detect has been just deflected but has not gone around the central compact object. Then the lens emission that is, tell, is, is telling us uh, information about trajectories that uh, cross the equatorial plane twice. And then the photon ring emission that are going to be emission from photons that uh, goes around the central object at least one. What we will see is that uh, actually, because the, the for our purpose, the important the important emission because is what may may be different from one space time to another is the photon ring emission. Unfortunately, when you compute all the trajectories and the intensity and uh, so the luminosity that you are gonna uh, obtain in your screen, you will see that the photon ring emission 
is highly dermanified because the, the, as we will see later, the other types of emission are much stronger because every time that a photon goes around, it's picking additional light, additional intensity. We will see later this. So before doing that, well, we have to, to model how the accretion this, because at the end of the day, these photons that are reaching our, our screen are coming from the process, from the physical process that are taking uh, place in the, in the accretion disk. This is described by the radiative Boltzmann equation. In order to, um, to make a realistic uh, simulation, um, you have to solve and you have to, to take into account some parameters uh, of, of, the, uh, of the physics of the accretion disk. This is not very clear. And actually, uh, we, as we were interested just in the geometrical effects on the, on the photons trajectories, we were just assuming very, very particular and very restricted, we, I have to say very uh, restricted uh, assumptions in order to have a, a very simple intensity profile for the for the accretion this that's that uh, is going to depend just on where uh, or where is located the peak of luminosity of the accretion this that is around the central object to do so then we are considering three models in the in the in, in the first model we consider that the the peak of the luminosity is located at the innermost stable circular orbit the second model we locate this peak at the photon photon sphere and the third model we we locate this this peak of the luminosity at the even horizon if there is an even horizon that in, in the cases that we are going to study may not be an even, an, an even horizon. What we are going to, at the end, uh, analyze in our detectors, as I say, this is an oversimplified picture of the, of the accretion disk, because at the end, uh, this entangle, and um, I, I will talk about this in the conclusion, this entangle defects of the accretion disk from the effects due to just from uh, due to uh, the the geometrical properties of your space time is a is a real challenge that uh, probably in the next few years uh, will 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 have a lot of attention. So the observed intensity at the end of the day is gonna is gonna be corrected. So the intensity, the luminosity. Uh, of the accretion disk, but will be corrected when you uh, when you compile in your in your screen in your in your telescope by two effects. One uh, that is related to the gravitational redshift. Obviously, depending on where the photon was emit uh, closer or farther from the central object, is going to suffer a different redshift, a different gravitational redshift. And then due to the collective luminosities, because of the, of the deflections of the photons going around the, the central object. This was something that was proposed in, in 2019 by, by Greer, Holmes, and Wong in order just to give a simplified picture of how the effects of geometry uh, will affect the, the, the 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 intensity that you you are you are gonna collect in your in your observatories. So we are gonna start to 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 deal with a uh, with a particular space time metric that is described by these two functions, very similar to Schwarzschild. Actually, Schwarzschild is, as I said before, is a particular case where this parameter a is equal to zero. If we have a, a, an A that is uh, less than two times uh, the mass of the central object, what you have is a regular black hole. And if you have A over two times N, you will have a transversal wormhole. 
The point is that, okay, let's try to compute how the intensity and the luminosity and the picture that you are gonna uh, have in your observatory uh, and in your reconstruction of, of the data that you obtain may be useful to infer whether you have in either of these three cases. Well, in this case, your the potential in is given by by this uh, by this uh, picture. Depending on this parameter a, you will have a different potential shape. Uh, actually, this line, the dashed uh, black line, corresponds to the to the to the Schwarzschild case, and the other ones correspond to a regular or a transversal wormhole. The point, and is what what is important here, is that at the end, if you compute the 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 different uh, emissions that you are going to collect, depending on the impact parameter, what you have is that the direct emission corresponds to a very wide range of impact parameters. The lens emission just corresponds to a very uh, to a very narrow range of, 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 uh, of values for the impact parameters. And the photon ring that is going to tell you what type of and where is located the, this maximum and what type of metric are you going to have at the end correspond just to a very, very, very narrow uh, range of impact parameters. So at the end, and as we will see now, Mm, to distinguish, at least for this toy model, to distinguish between these three cases is not gonna be is not is not gonna be easy to do it because, as I say, uh, the three cases that here corres correspond to to the to the blue, red, and dashed line just meet almost in the same in the same point the the photon ring. And the, the ranges of impact parameters uh, is, is, is very small in comparison with the other types of, of emission that you, you have. So in order to do what you are going to obtain in your observer screen, what you do then is to trace back all the trajectories that you, you are detecting in your, in your, uh, in your observatory. If we assume, and here we have assumed that basically this, this line here is the accretion disk, and we are located in the North Pole. Actually, as we have uh, an spherical uh, symmetric space time, where you locate your, your, your accretion disk, it doesn't matter at all. But in matters, the inclination of the accretion disk will respect to the observer. In this case, as, as I say, we locate the, the observer in the far infinity of the, of the right. So we are going to detect all this. Well, maybe it cannot be seen very well, but we will detect all the, all the photons that are following these trajectories here. Basically, we have that these trajectories over here, the green ones, uh, are, are the, the direct emission that are generated basically in, in the accretion disk and then goes through infinity. Then we have here that these, these uh, the, the orange ones correspond to the, to the lens. Uh, to the lens emission that basically well goes around in the the central object uh, so intersect the equatorial plane uh, twice such that some photon might be generated here in this part of the accretion disk and then going around on some others will be generated here and will go directly to the to the to the observer screen so that uh, in addition to the to the to the photons that are just deflected 
less than uh, less than pi, you have to the direct emission that all these photons that are generated here contribute to this direct emission. That's why at the end of the day, the, the direct emission is the one that is dominating the, the, the picture that you are gonna construct. And then you have the purple one here, that's, well, actually this one here, that's, well, better say the red one here that you cannot see very well, that corresponds to the, to the photons that are coming from nearby the critical orbit. So are coming from the uh, from, from impact parameters that are very, very close to the to the to the critical parameter that corresponds to the circular orbit. Uh, you have to take into account that at the end of the day, this circular orbit is unstable. So any photon that is exactly there will go around and arbitrary number of times the compact object, but then will fall into the compact object and, or will escape to infinity because it's an unstable uh, circular orbit. So we have this red one that is suddenly coming from nearby the, the critical, uh, the circular orbit. And then the purple, that's what is, uh, that is the, the so-called uh, inner, in, inner shadow that are from photons coming from, from uh, uh, corresponding to impact parameters that, uh, that uh, correspond to a minimum radius with respect to the central object that is closer to the central object than the, the circular orbit. Then if we do this for the three cases that we are uh, studying, well, actually the feature that you have is more or less the same in this, in, in this uh, uh, when you just depict the, the trajectories. Actually, the regular and the Schwarzschild home, it doesn't give apparently any difference. Just if you go to the one hole, where we are assuming obviously that there is no emission from the other side of the, of the throat of the one hole, you have that the, the 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 ranges and and the contribution from the from the photon ring emission is a bit wider than in the other in the other two. So if we then apply this to the to the intensity profiles of the of the accretion disk, what you have is that for for the for the, for the model one that I I saw before you will have let me let me remind you that we are located in the in the north pole of the of the object what you have is that for the Schwarzschild black hole you have the and uh, you are going to have this this type of superimposing uh, light rings that neither of 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 the ones that you see here correspond to the photon ring actually the photon ring will be over here and you cannot see because the intensity is very, very low. For the regular, you have a very similar picture. While for the wormhole, you have for the same intensity profile, you have that the intensities are a bit different due to mm, what's, uh, what I was explaining you before due to the, the, the difference on the, on the ranges of the, uh, of the different emissions that you are gonna collect in your, in your, in your, on your screen. If you go to the second model of emission, the second profile, what you obtain is something similar. Actually, you have the Schwarzschild and the regular black hole that uh, are, are very similar between them. You can also see how the intensity, this is just, the intensity profile as emit by the accretion this and this is how the luminosity is affected by the gravitational redshift and by the trajectories that uh, follow the, the the photos around the the central object as you see in these two cases the uh, profiles are uh, observed emission seems very similar and in this case, also seems similar, but 
is a bit shift to the interior of the of the object in comparison with the other two. If you go then to the pair profile, you have something similar. In the two first cases, you, you don't have uh, actually uh, observable uh, difference. And in the third one, what you have at the end is, well, you have a, a bit uh, brighter tone area here in comparison with, with, the, with the other two. But what happens if we have a, a, a space time that is, because these space times actually differ from Schwarzschild uh, in a parameter and actually the space time is uh, physically is completely different, but in with respect to photon trajectories are very similar. What happens if we have something uh, much different? Than the than the Schwarz in black hole. Uh, that is what happens if the effective potential that is uh, uh, that is uh, governing the, the photon trajectories is very different with respect to the to the Schwarz one. So what we analyze was to okay, let's consider a, an spherical symmetric space time uh, given by this function such that. Uh, as in the cases before, we have uh, the Schwarz black hole as a particular case where this parameter a is equal to zero. But now this 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 term is a bit different. This corresponds basically to two horizon black holes or to a transversal world hole where there there are gonna have two photon spheres, one located at the throat of the world hole. And the other one located nearby the, the photon sphere of, of the Schwarz black hole. If you plot the potential, the effective potential, what you see is that while the dashed line here corresponds to the Schwarz black hole, now we have one maximum that is going to be here around for the for the other two cases, and a maximum located, located at the at the at the center. So that if you compute how is the is the different emissions with respect to the impact parameters, what you obtain is something very different than 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 the Schwarz black hole. So that's one aspect that in this case you will see a real difference when you simulate the, the luminosity and the picture that you must obtain from the from the central object depending on this on this parameter. So as before, what we do is to ray trace back all the photon trajectories that reach infinity. Uh, as in the previous cases, uh, the equation is located in the equatorial plane and is perpendicular to the to the observer. So the observer is located at the North Pole in the far infinity uh, at the right side. So we have the Schwarzschild and the two horizon black hole that basically what you are gonna have is, well, something similar actually uh, in both cases. But if you compute now the case of the wormhole, with, well, let me, let me just first compare the, the Schwarzschild and the two horizon black hole. You have very similar pictures actually at the end of the day. So in this case, uh, you may have a bit more difference with respect to the cases uh, that you say I saw before. But at the end of the day, the the, the picture is is gonna be is gonna be very similar. If you use the 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 third profile of emission in as 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 in the previous cases. The, the picture that you are going to have uh, for these both objects are going to be similar. But what happens when you consider the, the wormhole? Well, the wormhole in this case has two, two, two photon spheres. So there are two locations of unstable circular orbits. That is going to give you, obviously, uh, 
to photon ring emissions located at different ranges of the impact parameter. In order to, to make it clear, because if you put all the trajectories together, yeah, it's, uh, it looks very messy and, and you cannot see anything. First, we compute the, the, the trajectories that comes from the, from the outer photon sphere and beyond, and then the ones coming from the inner photon sphere. And as you see, well, this actually is very similar to the case of the previous cases, but this is giving you a completely new, uh, new, completely new trajectories that uh, that are gonna follow for some uh, from some photos uh, with an impact parameter that is below the one the outer photon sphere and is between these these two photon spheres. Then if we compute how the appearance of this object is, and we compare with the Schwarzschild one, we see that in this case, actually, there are big differences between them. Actually, while in the Schwarzschild black hole for the first, first profile, you have just a least observable by the, by the naked eye, mm. a couple or maybe three superimposed light rings, in the work of case, you have many of them. The same happens when, when you compute the second profile and also with the, with the third profile. And this is because of the, the existence of this, of this second, second photon, this second photon ring that's, that is absent in the case of Schwarzschild black hole or in the case of any, any solution of the third family. So just to conclude, to give some, some ideas and, and, and some summary of, of this talk, we have seen that similar space-time metric characterizing objects might lead to a different optical appearance. So uh, if in the future with, the, with, the, with, the, with the observatories, we are able to disentangle uh, the different light rings that uh, are that compose the picture of the central object we may infer some de deviations from uh, from from let's call it classical uh, black hole here it's true that we have just considered very very simplified profiles emission of the accretion leaves obviously it's going to be a challenge to 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 disentangle the physics of the accretion this from the pure geometrical effects and 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 this this field is i think is going to be very very active in the next few years and uh, and and a real challenge to to disentangle all all these these effects we have either consider neither consider rotating objects actually in in some in some publications, they they refer that uh, as the the rotation, the angular momentum of the central objects are is expected to be very low. Mm, the the effects that this rotation has on the image that you, you are gonna you are gonna construct is is not very high in comparison with other with other effects. But may future very long baseline interferometry be able to solve the, the, the diffuse but sharp contribution from light rings associated to multiple photon spheres? Well, this is uh, a question that we hope to be answered with next, not with the even horizon telescope, but yes, but with the, with the new generation of, of, uh, of telescope. Because disentangling these effects may be the definite test to, 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 to the care family of solutions. As you all know, uh, well, in general relativity, uh, a stationary object uh, must be within this, this family of solutions that are gonna are gonna describe just by, by three by three magnitudes that are the, the electrical charge, the, the angular momentum, and the and the mass. 
And I just want to finish with a picture of the, I think the first person who, who studied this and who constructed in a very artistic way, how a black hole, how a, a, a compact, ultra compact object looked like that was uh, luminous in, in 1979. And, and, and well, he was very, very, uh, very brave to 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 get this picture just with the with the computing resource that was from that were in in that epoch that obviously are not the ones that we we have today. And this is all. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, what, what kind of model of aggression list are you considering? Well, we, we are considering. Oh, I, I pass. We are just considering profiles so of the intensity and how the luminosity uh, decays with respect to the to the distance to the to the compact object. So we are considering that uh, the emission is monochromatic. We are considering that the disk is optically thin, what means basically that the photons that cross the disk again are not interfering or interacting with the, with the disk. So we are considering very, very oversimplified assumptions in order to, to compute the, the, the simulation. <laughs> Take a realistic situation, which nobody knows what the realistic Yeah. 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 You said that the, well, the spin of the black hole is expected to be low? Because, uh, and this was, actually, actually I, don't, I don't know the details, because, well, or at least the simulation that they performed uh, by, by these people in 2021, actually this uh, image, are, are, uh, uh, this picture is, is from this paper, they compute, taking into account just a care family of, uh, of black holes, how the picture um, is modified depending on um, two parameters. Uh, assuming the same mass, they were varying the inclination of the, of the equation this with respect to the observer and the, the angular momentum of the object. And what they found is that the, the, the angular momentum doesn't affect very much the picture that you, you obtain. So, it, so it's not that the black hole itself in general has low spin, but that the impact on the yeah. is spin. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, because the, the spin is, is a, a subdominant correction to the, to the, to the potential. So that, that is yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, <clears throat> and which observatory then you said that the, the, the prospects for the future that there will, there will be another generation of observatories. Is there anything in mind that uh, after the, I mean, because the design the, the of the telescope is just a name. I mean, the reality is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a set of telescopes. Yeah, yeah. And it's unmined and like that. So, so is that are there any plans for, for the next generation? I think there are some plans. I, I I don't have the details. I think they they well probably the most ambitious ones. They they expect to have several uh, space telescopes in order to to well to take information from all of them and then reconstruct the the, the appropriate picture. Some other maybe more modest, they just assume to improve what is what is now uh, is the, the even horizon telescope or the 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 net of telescope that they they are using. But well uh, let's see what happens.
in general, well, this is for everybody in general, do you know if there is any hint of a highly rotating black hole? But if you follow between the X rays, they, they, they say they have a number of them that are almost massively rotating. Yeah. Uh -huh. The, the thing is, is, is that here, but the right? supermassive ones, I think, no. Supermassive ones. The, 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 the problem here is, is that the, is that the, the Nehru Center Scope has made observations of two very different black holes or, or, or whatever they, they see there, right? The one is the M87, which is a very active, uh, and then I think those kind of systems, the observations is that uh, in general it might be a high spin. And, and the other one is like the, our black hole. Which is the opposite, which is the a very, 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 very wired environment uh, where you know you don't know what happened with the steam of the black hole. Mm -hmm. But in the, but this is because they are, they are very different. Uh, uh, but but as I said, I mean, I think all the three people they they have measured very high steam in black holes. Uh, actually, the, the the it was supposed that all the the engine of all the AGNs is supposed to be a rotating black hole. Because it has the dynamo effect to, to produce these jets. Otherwise, hmm. people doesn't know how to produce the jets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but the, the spin is very, I mean, you have, you must have, you must go, I think, in my opinion, the, the your telescope has to be, you know, orders of magnitude better than these things in order to see a spin okay. with this. Okay, so any other question? If not, thank you again. Well, maybe, maybe there, there is any question over there. I, I, I have a question, Diego. Yeah. It's more of a curiosity. This, this solution that you mentioned, the transversible war home, uh, as an exterior solution, yeah. or the metric, what physical system it represents? So the Svarsid metric represents a point mass, no? Yeah. Uh, that's, is there a, a physical situation that corresponds to the Warhol, the well, transversal Warhol? Well, <clears throat> well it, represent, it has a mass, uh, a point-like mass, as in the case of, the, of Schwarzschild, but in order, well, actually, we don't know any uh, any mechanisms of, of collapsing that might lead to to a wormhole. And actually, the, the stationary and static solutions, as this one, require in in, in general some fields that uh, with a with a negative kinetic energy. Uh, well. Mm, a physical, physically realistic model uh, is difficult. To, <laughs> is difficult to say yes. No, but, but, but this cannot be an exterior in general relativity, right? No. Uh, well, it can be if well, you consider. Exterior, yeah, like if you consider some particular fields. Yeah. I, I guess that what you mean is you don't mean the, the outside part where there is nothing. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. I mean, I the the, the traditional workholes, I guess, uh, are connecting these singularities uh, inside the black hole, right? Yeah. So, but, so I was curious because uh, I didn't realize that from the outside they look different. I I, I always thought that outside the black hole you 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 see a vast. I'm surprised that that you see something else outside, no? So I was trying to to understand how come you don't see as Varsin from outside. Actually, if you if you consider well, this case that is the is the simplest one uh, that is written in coordinates for a far away observer. That far away observer actually are well for him is gonna be the, the same metric in either case because. If, if you see, well, basically is is the, the the metric for both cases, for any of these cases, is asymptotically flat, 
So for our yes. way of server, it's gonna look the same. Actually, okay. it only effects are gonna be very, very close to the central object, as in the case of, of, uh, of uh, uh, photons originated very nearby. Actually, the photons originated uh, a bit farther of the photon ring look different and look uh, look equally for 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 the observer in in any of these cases okay thank you thank you Diego. <clears throat> okay yeah once <laughs> more last 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 one. yeah i forgot that uh, enrique was here <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so sorry, Enrique, that I forgot that you were here. Mm -hmm. I, I saw you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I couldn't make it. <clears throat> so thank you again. <clears throat> okay. Good, good. So let's.